Good afternoon. Welcome to Blessed Sacrament Catholic Church. Today we celebrate the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reminder to all parents, as a precaution during coronavirus, the cry room for small children is closed. We ask you to please accompany your child to the restroom if they need to go. And at this time, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices. Our celebrant this evening is Father David. And we begin by praying together the diocesan prayer for vocations. O God, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto you. Bless our Diocese of Savannah with many vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life. Give the men and women you call the light to understand your gift and the love to follow always in the footsteps of your priestly son. Amen. Please join with me in singing our opening hymn, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines. Juicy, rich food and pure, choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the land of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. 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 Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priest and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast. But they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of the, his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready. But those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast, whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike. And the hall was filled with guests. But the king came in to meet the guest. He saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? but he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet and cast him into the darkness outside, where they will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise.
The table is prepared. The invitation was purchased and sent to all of us. Will we accept that invitation? Will we accept God's invitation? The table is prepared. The altar is prepared for the coming down of the Holy Spirit to transform the bread and wine into the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The life-giving bread and the saving cup, the everlasting life, the spiritual nourishment that leads us through this life. It was bought for us, purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ, who hung upon the cross to free us from sin and death. Through his resurrection, the table and the feast of the heavenly kingdom was open to all who believe. A place in God's house is prepared for all those who believe. Every time we celebrate the holy sacrifice of the Mass, every time the bread and wine are brought forward and the Holy Spirit is called down, and it is transformed into the body and blood of Jesus. We partake of that heavenly kingdom, of that heavenly feast, of that banquet prepared for us for all eternity. Some will ignore his call and refuse to come. Some will turn their backs on the call of Jesus. But we are here because we need his nourishment. We are here because we believe he is truly present in his body and blood on that heavenly table. And so, are we worthy to receive him? No, but by the grace of God, we are made worthy. We are prepared to receive him. Through the grace given to us through the sacrament of reconciliation, we are forgiven of our sins, set back on the right path, and worthy to receive his body and blood. In his love and mercy, God forgives us of our sins. He washes us clean through the words of absolution. Are we ready to receive him? Every time we come to Mass, we receive his body and blood, the spiritual food we need for nourishment. We are living in dark times right now, where fear is ever-present. Now more than ever, we need his body and his blood. We need his strength and his protection. When we come to Mass, we receive his word, we receive his body and blood. The table is prepared for us. Are we ready to receive him? Christ tells us, do not be afraid. And in a time when we're living in fear, we need those words more now than ever. Do not be afraid. Jesus leads us. Are we ready and open to following him? Are our hearts prepared to receive him each and every time we come to Mass? God is with us every step of the way. He has prepared his table for us. He has sent out an invitation to all. Will we listen? Will we accept? Will we come to him with humble and contrite hearts? Sorry for the sins we have committed, knowing that he is there to forgive us. Every time we come to Mass, we recognize our unworthiness, but by the words of God, through his absolution, we can and do receive his body and his blood. Jesus is with us every step of the way, do not be afraid, do not live in fear, for he will lead us where he needs us to go. Will we follow him? The table is prepared 
the invitations are sent. Will we accept ours? Will we choose to follow him? Will we be nourished by his body and blood, the spiritual food needed for the journey? The journey is long. May we keep him as the center of our lives, ready and willing to do his will. Do not be afraid for he is with us. He will never abandon us, and he will never leave us. Do not be afraid. Do not live in fear, for Christ is present. He is here. He is carrying us. Let us always keep him as the center of our lives. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death, and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He has ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Trusting in the Father's love and mercy, we now present to him our needs and petitions. For the church, that we may hear God's invitation to life and enter wholeheartedly into the banquet that God has prepared for us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will direct the minds and hearts of those in public office for the true peace and freedom of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord God will wipe away the tears of all who struggle with addiction, emotional illness, or family difficulties. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our cities and communities. That God will help us to understand the pain of those who have suffered injustice and give us the courage to work for reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For fuller participation in this Eucharistic liturgy, that we may draw strength for our daily lives from our communion with Christ and one another in our celebration each week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord, who will one day destroy death, may bring our faithfully departed, and especially those whose anniversaries we celebrate this week, Edward Sassine and Oscar Hale, and for John Thang Dang, for whom this Mass has been offered. To the Feast of Life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, give us new life and new
please join in singing our offertory hymn, Sing of Mary. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept your sacrifice Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant John, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we will be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I choose to be one with you, Jesus. I want your heart next to my heart, your soul next to my soul, your body inside my body and your blood running through my veins. I want your infinite divinity to fill me completely. Jesus, I want to be one with you in my thoughts, feelings, and desires, in what I say and do and what I do not do because of you. I embrace you now inside of me. Jesus, I love you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Join with me in singing our communion hymn, Taste and See.
Before we conclude our Mass, again, I encourage you to take home a copy of our parish bulletin so you know what's going on in our parish community. We welcome any newcomers or visitors to Blessed Sacrament. Thank you for choosing Blessed Sacrament to celebrate the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Today's second collection is for our Southern Cross Diocesan Drive. It is our diocesan official newspaper. The Southern Cross goes to every household, registered household in our Parish, um, we are assessed and charged for the uh, Southern Cross for each family in our in in Blessed Sacrament. Um, the the cost is about fifteen dollars a subscription. If you can please consider covering one or more of the fifteen dollars subscription costs uh, to support this broad-reaching evangelization newspaper in our diocese. It would be greatly appreciated. That is what today's second collection is for. It's for our Southern Cross Diocesan newspaper. Please remember to buy an ad and become a permanent member, a part of the Blessed Sacrament history. Your ad will be placed in the commemorative hundred years of faith, publication, celebrating the legacy of Blessed Sacrament Church. Please help to defray the cost of the publication. By purchasing a family support ad, a congratulations message, or an advertisement starting at $25 each. Forms are available in the back of church and on the Blessed Sacrament Church website. Please feel free to contact Deacon Bob Fritz for, for more information. If you are looking for additional ways to grow closer to God, look at all the blessings and benefits that will come to you when spending personal time with Jesus in prayer. Sign up for a time in our Adoration Chapel by contacting Sheila Lowe. Her information is in our bulletin and on the church website. The 100 Years of Faith Centennial Celebration Mass has been rescheduled due to COVID-19 precautions. This event has been moved to the first weekend of December. More de details will be forthcoming. So the, the centennial celebration scheduled for November 7th has been moved to the first weekend of December. Please remember that limited edition signed prints of the original artwork created by our own Sharon Sassine, renowned artist, are available for purchase in the church office. All pre proceeds from your $100 purchase help cover costs of centennial projects honoring our 100 years of faith at Blessed Sacrament. Also, please stop by the gym lobby to see the original painting. The parish office will be open as usual on Columbus Day, Monday, October 12th. 
As always, please remember to take your bulletins with you. We cannot reuse them. Please do not leave them in the pews. Also, we could have some help in uh, sanitizing the pews after Mass for our next celebration. That would greatly help us. Thank you again for your continued co cooperation and support in these uncertain times. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Have a blessed evening. Please join me in singing our closing hymn, We Are the Light of the World. <laughs>